Hello, everyone. How was the day? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> okay, some of us are happy at least. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about future of view. But before I start with that, I want to address a few things. Uh, it took a lot of convincing and almost an year to get view day, basically, to make this thing happen. And uh, I want to thank Janab, Hasgeek, and all the team who has made this thing possible. Uh, round of applause for them. Uh, and also for all the speakers who were there la late last night to preparing their slide and making all the preparation for the event today. Uh, again, a round of applause for the speakers. Yeah, uh, events are made by people, but they need money and uh, our platinum sponsor, Anatta, has helped us to basically be here and all the facilities and everything. Uh, thanks to all the sponsors. Uh, let's do a quick recap of the day. We got to know like uh, it's easy to learn Vue. We got to know you can build components and building component libraries is hard. We got to know we can build our blogs with Vue. You know like uh, scale is also a people problem. Like last team can be a large scale application. Uh, plugins can cure all kind of developer pain. We looked under the hood and find out how reactivity works. And we heard a React developer show his love for you. And most important lesson of the day, accessibility is business. So uh, let's we start from where it ended in the morning. Uh, view 3.0 is coming. Yes, it's coming. It's a bit about me. Uh, I'm Rahul Kadyan. Uh, you can find me on Twitter with this weird handle, I call it junk zero, but yeah, pronounce whatever you want. Uh, I'm a core team member, and I run a meetup in Bangalore called blr.view.community, uh, that's the website. And part time I'm building a conference in design, so look, look for that. Uh, let's get back to the future. Yes, 3.0 is coming. So why now? Like 2.0 was released almost three years ago, and it has been almost good for us. Like there are no pain, no problems, which cannot be done with 2.0. So why now? Why 3.0 is coming? So the main reason behind this thing is this particular chart. So it's it was red three years ago. Now it's green. So it's kind of a go. You can use proxies and improve to 3.0. So uh, so we kind of give us a gist like how object got defined. Reactivity works, you define a getter, there you just track all the dependencies. When something is accessed, you define a setter, you where you can notify all the dependence, like something has changed, update it. But uh, there's an inherent problem with this thing. So all the caveats and the complexity, like it has linear complexity. If you have 10 properties, we have to iterate across to all the 10 properties and make them reactive. So it incurs an upfront runtime cost. Then removal of properties and addition of properties is not possible because all that wiring is done upfront when your component is initiated. Also, array index and length assignments are not possible because there are no traps that which can actually intercept those four. And proxy does all. So proxy is kind of an interceptor which sits between your object and the accessor. So whenever let's say you want to access a key on object. It will ask the proxy object, uh, give me that key, then the proxy will go and actually find that key and return it. So proxy can intercept all the calls, like assignment on index, changing, uh, uh, adding new properties, removing new pro uh, removing properties, even your custom classes, objects, any kind of object you can think can be handled this thing. Okay, uh, so no more caveats. And I absolutely love proxies. So uh, as Praveen told us today, like dollar set is kind of a workaround, which uh, object would define reactivity cannot work with. So all those things, uh, array assignment, are gone now with the proxy based reactivity implementation. And it works with map, set, weak map, weak set, or any other class you want. So this small change has made view a lot faster, much, much faster than the object defined properties. 
and I have some numbers for you. So uh, this is not a real world application. It is like 3000 stateful components with lots of properties on it. And we are voting the same application with uh, 2.6, which is the uh, current stable build and 3.0 prototype. So if you see something, uh, the time spent in JavaScript is almost half. So we are getting double the speed of initialization of a new component. And if you see on memory, it's almost half the memory. So we are creating, we are using less memory. So double the speed, half the memory, 3.0 is coming. So uh, plus um, there are a lot of more uh, low level stuff is coming in view 3.0, which are going to increase speed even much farther. And uh, so for that, I want to take you to a small crash course. If you already know this, okay. So it's a small crash course, how virtual DOM in view works. So we write a component, something like this. We write templates uh, in HTML like language. And this template is passed, converted and runtime is represented as an object. So that object is representation of like what is the tag, what are the attributes, what are the child elements. It's a representation, it's kind of blueprint of your component or of your tree, what is actually being rendered in browser. So this thing we call a virtual node and how we get there is view compiler compiles that HTML into a function, which uses like create element or the function to create those objects. So whenever a component is rendered, it returns a bunch of objects. And this particular element, create element, takes three arguments, or tag, attribute, and a list of children, and basically returns out an object out of it. So this particular object is called virtual DOM node, or also called vNode, and we get this thing out of the template. So template converts to a render function, a render function returns a virtual DOM, and uh, this is virtual DOM node, and all the virtual do DOM node combine to create a virtual DOM tree. So uh, that's all. Uh, let's get what, how uh, we are using all these things in 3.0. So we are trying to build a smarter compiler that understands your code and try to uh, tries to uh, generate a more optimized or better code. So let's see this example. Uh, it's a simple template. It has two elements, one is component, other is normal div. So what compiler knows is like uh, all HTML tags are lower is single word uh, and single word. And all components start with a capital letter. So compiler can use those information. So instead of using a generic create element, it can find like create a virtual node element or create a virtual node for component. And this small change actually helps. So if we were doing this, our create element something looks like this. If it's a component, run this component, we create component v node. If it's an element, run create element v node. So we are moving this condition from runtime to compile time. So every create element is slightly faster. And those slight improvements add up across your application to make your application a little bit faster. So uh, we call this thing element type detection and we detect uh, from the understanding like capital uh, uh, tag starting with capital letter is a component and a text uh, single word lowercase uh, tags are elements and we correspondingly generate uh, create node elements for that. Another small improvement, but more effective, it comes from a concept in JavaScript called monomorphic calls. So what is monomorphic call? So if you see this, function call, it is taking four arguments. Uh, first is tag, uh, uh, so it's taking four arguments, but same thing can be done if it was taking this first argument, the span element, the tag, because there are no attribute, there are no children, but still we are calling it four arguments. So what happens with monomorphic calls is like, if your function is getting same kind of, and same number of arguments again and again, uh, JavaScript virtual machine optimize this function and reuse it. So Monomorphic functions, uh, monomorphic functions are a little bit faster because the uh, JavaScript runtime won't have to work on optimizing again and again. So that small improvement will affect every call. Like create element is being called for every item, you, uh, every tag you write in your uh, in your 
projects. So that small improve improvement will add up and will appear in the performance bo boost we get in 3.0. So uh, call remains same whether you get arguments or not. So this is monomorphic call. You can search about it. It's a very interesting topic. Can use in any of your application. Another thing I'm talking about like a uh, component fast path. So what it is is like at compile time we detect what kind of component you are writing. So uh, if this element has zero zero items, has zero children, then we know like you don't have to run the logic to diffing the children and all. We can skip all this part. So we sort sort of has some flags. These flags are kind uh, tell the the flags detect some information about your template at compile time and tell runtime that you can skip on these things. You don't have to perform this thing. So all unnecessary work and rendering components can be skipped over, resulting into a little faster, a little bit faster component runtime. Another thing is uh, in optimized slot generation. So if you have seen uh, how a compiler compiles a slot element is something like this. It creates an object and basically uh, creates an array of all the elements in that slot. So problem with this thing is all the dependency collection and everything happens where it's rendered. That is the parent component. But uh, parent component doesn't need to depend on those things. So there is unnecessary render of parent component. So a small improvement like converting this object to a function. So starting from 3.0, every slot is compiled to a function. And this small improvement helps to uh, better track the dependency. Like now dependencies would be tracked inside the child. And if something changes in slot, parent won't re-render, only child would re-render. Another improvement comes from understanding your code. Like uh, if you see this exam, uh, this component, there is some reactive part. And corresponding to that, we are generating some nodes. But there is other part which is static. It's never changing. So if your dynamic property is changing, your static part is re-rendered, which is not required. So what we can do is we can extract that V node and store it as a static variable and use it every time. Now, when the diff diffing algorithm would work on this, this component, it will see a reference to same object again and again, and it won't have to perform any kind of diffing for that static part. So all the static chunks from your template go, uh, are a little bit faster. So we applied same thing on props. So if you see, uh, you have some attributes. So uh, those attributes are static. There is no reactivity involved in them. So we can do same thing. We can extract them out to a static object. And our diffing algorithm will, effect, uh, will be improved with this. Another thing we see is like we use lots of inline handlers, something like this. Uh, and on event, you are increasing a variable or incrementing a variable. So this thing is converted to an inline function. And how so how JavaScript works is like every time you put an inline function, it's a new instance of function. So view has to unbind the already existing event handler and bind a new one for every render. So however, we know that uh, this is not what we want here. We want one event handler that stays across the life cycle of the component. So what we are doing, we are extracting that handler into a, uh, out of the scope and using same instance again and again. So all the binding and binding of event is not required. So that those are the, these are the improvements we are doing on compiler side. Now, all those improvements in compiler side are complementing the runtime. So we are getting a faster virtual DOM. And we have a, a new diffing algorithm that utilizes all the information we have collected at the compile time. So let's see this example. So if you want to, if you want to, if you are, let's say, if you are the diffing algorithm, you want to diff it. How will you do it? Uh, let's diff the div, diff the attributes on div. Now go to child, find first child, diff it again, again. So you will go to every element, every prop, one by one, and diff everything. So you'll find the differences, and if it doesn't match the previous DOM, you will re-render it. However, if you see this algorithm, uh, most of the part is not changing. The part which is changing is this particular part where we are using some reactive state. So in 
3.0, what we are trying to do is detect the part which are using reactivity or using some programming capabilities and extract them out and only work on them. So how we are doing this thing is we are dividing a component into blocks. So say uh, the component is, let's say it's a root block and every reactive content can be a block. And now collecting all the blocks inside a component and now diffing algorithm would only look at the blocks. So let's say you have an if statement in your component and now we'll define divide blocks like this. You have a root block, you have a conditional block and a reactive block. So all you need to diff in this particular case is those three blocks. If there is no change in those three blocks, rest of the content is already static. So you don't have to diff that. Same applies for four, four loops. So in this case, uh, you have a for loop which will return multiple nodes. So every node out of that for loop is a dependency now. And we'll basically divide this into a root block, multiple iterative blocks, and a reactive block, and diff only those parts where something can change. So a good way to see this thing is in some, something like this diagram. So every box is an element which is using some reactivity. And every circle is a static element. So if you want to diff this tree, in the conventional way how Vue 2.x is doing right now, you have to diff 23 nodes. All those, all those items you have to diff. But if you get rid of static items and just collect the blocks, you get down from 23 to seven nodes. And this is like a, a huge improvement on the diffing algorithm. And the, the core of change detection is diffing algorithm, so which would make Vue 3 significantly faster. Another thing coming up is smaller bundle size. So right now, what we have on a prototype, the uh, view 3.0 is 10 kilobytes gzipped, and you can make it even smaller. So currently, how we do all the things like we have some global APIs, view.nextic or view.use. So uh, in bundle, uh, in ESM build, we are removing all those uh, surface APIs from there and making them, making them as named exports. So you can import the parts what you need. And not just for those uh, global APIs, we are making all the features like transitions, transition group, VSO, all those uh, functionality that come out of the works view, pre -sakeable. So everything you are using will be in your project and something you are not using, let's say you are not using transitions in your application, they would be stripped out of the view, view build and you will get a, sl uh, a smaller size and less than 10 kilobytes. So that's there. Uh, next few improvements we are doing are on uh, DX side. So a new API is being added. Uh, we call it render causation. So your component re-renders, but you don't know why it does this component re-render. A new hook is coming called render triggered. Uh, so this will be fired whenever a change, uh, a change is detected and re-render has been triggered. So you can put a debugger there and look at like what is the property that uh, change uh, triggered this particular change and debug your component with more information. Additionally, we are improving warning traces. Right now, you get some warning, but you don't know where this warning is coming from. So we would uh, create a trace on like uh, a component tree, like how this warning is being propagated and how it's presented to you. So you can debug, like you can go to that particular component and debug how this warning was created or which component emitted that warning. Uh, one more improvement on template side is we would be providing template source maps. So you can now put breakpoints at your template strings as well. So if, let's say you have a if can, uh, v if in your template and you want to pause at that v if. You can put a breakpoint there and look like, uh, check what, hap what is happening there. Uh, another huge improvement is coming from native. Uh, we are making it easier to target for multiple platforms. Uh, you would come with an API to create your own renders. So let's say you want to target native uh, iOS or Android. Let's say when you want to target a PDF, you want to generate a PDF using Vue.js. So you can create your own render. Uh, API is pretty simple. You call create render, and you provide some method to insert an element, remove an element, create new elements, and query selector. 
and you get a render out of it and basically you can render to any target. Uh, next is, uh, it, we are making it simpler to contribute. So a lot of people have asked me like how they can contribute and it was always difficult for me to tell like how they can contribute because Vue is a monolith. You have to basically spend a lot of time to understand all the concern going in there. Going forward, we are adopting few things. We are dividing our project into smaller independent chunks. So let's say Proin wants to contribute to reactivity. He can go to that module and contribute to that part. Somebody wants to contribute to compiler. They can go to compiler and contribute to that part. So all the concerns are limited to the scope of the package. And it's easier to understand a small chunk. And you can understand all the chunks to understand you completely. So it, it would be a great opportunity for all those people who are waiting to contribute to Vue.js. Whenever it is open source, go ahead and start contributing. Another big thing would be like U3.0 source code is written in TypeScript. And you don't have to look through all the packages to understand. You can just look at the type inferences, uh, all the APIs, and just work in particular functions. But uh, Vue is written in TypeScript. You don't have to use TypeScript. Like currently, Vue is written in Flow. Uh, and you don't have to use Flow in your application. You can use JavaScript or TypeScript or anything you want. Similarly, with 3.0, we are writing in type, TypeScript because it makes us uh, makes the job of maintaining the framework easy. But you don't have to use TypeScript if you don't want to. And another way to contribute today is you can be part of RFCs. RFCs are kind of making all the decisions what goes into view and what doesn't. So if you have some concern, go voice your concern on those uh, on this repository. If something is breaking your application, a new feature that's coming might break your application. Voice your concern like this should this doesn't work for me or if too many if a lot of people have similar kind of concern you would rethink and redesign the APIs. Okay, uh, finally let's go to something which broke the internet recently, uh, that's the composition API, and uh, yes. Uh, so why we are introducing a new API? So mainly if you have been using mixins, the problem with mixin is if you are, let's say you are using two mixin in one component and you got some issue, you look at like uh, this state is coming from somewhere, which mixin you don't know. You have to jump to the source code of both the mixin to find out which mixin is actually exporting that property. Another thing is, let's say both the, both the mixin are exporting a prop or a state variable with same name. Let's say both have counter. And now you're using both the mixins. You cannot use both the mixins because both are depending on same variable. And they might change that variable in different differently that could break the behavior of mixin as well as your component. So there are a couple of downsides to mixin. Though mixin help a lot in some scenarios, but eventually you can get to a rabbit hole where you don't know where changes are coming from. So to mitigate all those issues, we came with a composition API and in community React hooks have been working really well for React people. So we are trying to create a similar functional API which you can compose and reason about where state is coming from. Uh, let's take an example. So uh, this is how a component would look like. A new method is added there called setup method. So this is, it, it can set up uh, initial state for your component. And here will go all the composition API related stuff. Uh, a new API is exported reactive. This is same as what we have right now, uh, an API called observable. So you can define some reactive state and in that state, you can use computed properties as well. So here we are using uh, a computed property, a function that returns double of the count variable. We can define some functions in line here. And finally, we can export uh, whatever the state we have created here. This, the object we return here, is available on the this scope of the template. So what we can do, we can do state.count, state.double. We can access that increment method with return. Pretty much how we all already do with data and computed properties and methods. So uh, consumption wise, nothing is changing. Just this setup method is something new. And what we can do with like this method gives you flexibility. Let's say this component is growing in size. You want to uh, reduce the size of this component. You can extract a function out of it, like let's say use counter, and all the logic from the setup method is now in this function. And we are simply calling this function in our setup method and returning the state. 
nothing need to be changed in the template template remains same what you can do additionally is let's move this counter method to a separate file now this use counter is in a counter.js file and in our component we are importing it and using in same way so this uh, this allows us to refactor our code into smaller chunks and reuse it as well there's, there is no concern about like in, there's no information about component in this particular use counter function it is creating some state and returning some api to access that state so that's there uh, uh, somehow i broke bro slow here okay <laughs> okay so nothing need to change and let's go to the case like when you are using two mixing and both have same properties same thing can happen here but javascript comes to the rescue when you are destructuring that object, you can rename it to something else. Let's say you rename state to counter, and now you can return counter increment, and you will use it accordingly in your template. The state becomes counter dot count and double. So all those namespace collision things are going away. If you are interested to know more about it, go to this URL. Uh, maybe click a photograph of this. Uh, view composition API rfc dot netlify dot com, and uh, we have created an extensive documentation on what is coming to the uh, composition API and what you can do. There are plenty of examples there. Uh, and plus there's, there is a plugin that works for Vue 2.x, so you can try the composition API today itself. Uh, we are on questions, but I guess I came with my own questions. Let's go with them first. <laughs> so uh, three point is coming in TypeScript. So do we need to learn TypeScript now? Uh, no, if you are using Vue 3.0, you don't need to learn TypeScript. If you are, if you want to contribute to TypeScript, you have to learn TypeScript, and it's a good skill to learn. Uh, does 3.0 break my applications? Uh, 3.0 is not deprecating or dropping anything. All the public API in 2.x and 3 is almost same. One more API is coming, that's the composition API that adds upon the existing APIs. So don't have to worry about anything breaking. Let's say you don't use composition API, you Component work as it is. What, why it's 3.0 is because we are dropping object dot property, uh, define property syntax, and using proxies. So that breaks something. Internet Explorer does not have support for proxies, and Internet Explorer is officially dead now, so it won't ever get support for proxies. So if you want to support Internet Explorer, you have to use a build that won't that would have all the constant, all the caveats of 2.x, but uh, you can use 3.0. You can create two builds with Vue CLI modern mode. For, with, for modern browser, it will use all the latest proxy based thing. For older browsers, uh, it will use a different implementation of the activity system using object defined properties. But you will be can, uh, restricted to all the caveats we have in 2.x if you want to support Internet Explorer. And uh, in the uh, Vue will provide ample warnings. Let's say if you are using uh, if you are building your component with uh, modern mode and you are using uh, array index assignment, so we'll provide warning for that. Uh, this kind of syntax won't be, uh, th this kind of feature won't work in Internet Explorer build. So use an alternate way or remove the, uh, uh, stop supporting Internet Explorer and feeding Microsoft. <laughs> okay. Uh, another concern I have, like now we have two ways of writing components. So we always had two ways of writing components. Uh, you can use template or render function, but I haven't seen any person who is writing all render functions or all templates. They ask, most of the work can be done by template, like 99% of my components are template with templates. But once in a while, I land into some situations where I want to do something, and those kind of things are not possible in template. Like template is a restrictive language. So you have to jump into render function and create your component. You can, analogous to this, you can have, uh, we have object-based API where we use data and computed and method to basically build our components. That works really well. But once in a while, we want to build a feature, we want to use Mixins, and want to share that feature across all, com uh, across multiple components. There we can jump and use a uh, composition API. So we, ha we have two ways of writing components, but we will, we have to choose like on a case basis, if it makes sense to use uh, templates, you'll use template. If it makes sense to use object-based API, you'll use that. If it makes sense to use render function, we'll use render function. And same with composition API. 
Okay, uh, that's all from me today. Uh, I'm Rahul, you can find me on Twitter by this. And I want to introduce Usto, Tarek, uh, please come on the stage. Uh, he's also a core team member and he's involved in community a lot. So, to you. Does it work? It should. I originally uh, wasn't meant to uh, give a talk today, but we still have a few, min a few minutes, so let me share uh, what I didn't prepare for today. Can we have a browser? Because I would like to show you a few of uh, my favorite websites, which may have or may not be created with Vue.js. Just a browser, because I will be switching from one to one. My real name is Dariusz Wiondrychowski, but it's uh, quite difficult to pronounce. Uh, so my friends call me Gusto, and uh, I consider all of you my friends already, so I'd be happy if you call me this way. Uh, when I came here to India, I also started having big problems uh, with uh, learning and remembering all the Indian names, because they are so different from what I uh, knew from Europe. But what is, what is not different is the passion that people here have uh, for the technology and also for Vue.js. Uh, that's what I will be talking today. Mm. And uh, I came uh, a few days ago uh, to Delhi because that was the cheapest way uh, to come to India. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm a cheapskate. I uh, try to uh, go to as many uh, local meetups, uh, as many uh, conferences as I can, just to uh, meet view, develop, uh, view developers to ask uh, what to struggle with so I can pass people uh, like Rahul who are better with coding uh, than me. And uh, in Delhi, uh, my friend uh, who Actually, he doesn't use Vue.js, he uses React. But he was a Sikh, and uh, Amandip, uh, that's also your friend. And he took me to a Sikh temple, and we attended a community uh, dinner together. And uh, what I noticed there, that there were people uh, sitting down and uh, uh, getting uh, help with uh, food and service by other people who were voluntarily helping them. And uh, um, community of developers doesn't really work uh, differently. It works pretty much the same way. Some of us, uh, like uh, library authors, like uh, event organizers, uh, like uh, workshop uh, creators, uh, authors of uh, tutorials, authors of courses, uh, or people who just uh, answer questions or stack overflow or uh, chats or forums, uh, provide help for others, and later when uh, they Want uh, they, they need to require help from uh, other developers. Uh, those uh, that uh, previously were uh, held by them uh, were uh, got got help from them. Uh, now uh, they uh, are uh, knowledgeable enough because uh, they received this help before. So now they can either help. Do, uh, they can. Uh, push this help uh, further uh, to uh, new generations of uh, developers. And uh, in the developers world, new generation is practically year after year because we get uh, new people interested in uh, development uh, very fast. Uh, so what I, uh, when I was coming to India, what I uh, started becoming interested in, interested in was the place of India on the map of uh, Vue.js world. So let's start with the first website, which is called Vue People. Viewpeople.org. Yeah. Hi, Nico. Nico is the author of the website. It may be a little slow on this Wi-Fi. Okay, so uh, let's yeah, let's make it bigger. Can we make India a little okay? We're doing nice. Let's see where we have some developers. Uh, I see some in Bangalore, uh, some in uh, maybe it's uh, Mumbai, maybe it's Pune. Uh, I don't think I see anything in Delhi. Ah, that's Delhi. Okay, yeah. 
I was in Delhi and I didn't recognize it on the map. Uh, it's my fault. I thought it's slightly uh, more to the more to the south. Um, okay, so uh, let me ask: How many of you are represented here? Great. What about the rest? And if you see a map of, of, of uh, the whole world, in India there are so many people and there are so many developers. So why on the map there are not as many uh, Vue.js developers? And uh, that's nobody's fault, but uh, it's uh, we. We as a community that currently uses Vue.js or is just learning Vue.js, uh, it's we who can change it because together uh, we can make the community uh, bigger and better, not only in India, but also around all the world. How I like to say it, uh, um, united we stand. Uh, let's go to the next website. Uh, okay, before. There are multiple ways in which we can help each other. And one of those ways is the way of Rahul. I call it this way. Uh, my friend Amandip, uh, the Sikh from Delhi, re uh, helped me realize that on my trip around India, I'm actually following the path of Rahul because I ended up on the exact seat in uh, Amandip's car on which Rahul on previous conference was sitting before me. So uh, let's try to follow the path of Rahul and uh, I will ask you about uh, libraries. How do you think, uh, how many Vue.js libraries were created by Indian developers? And we're not talking about the libraries of Rahul, which were a few. I didn't know even one before today now I know because I heard about it uh, here on the corridor. So let's open View Expert. Is the author here with us? Yeah. Can I? <laughs> Why we are opening it is because I want it to be inspiration for you that uh, even if uh, the community in Vue.js isn't uh, Mm, what I would call the mainstream of uh, the biggest, uh, biggest uh, libraries and biggest uh, communities uh, uh, around the world, uh, mm, libraries like Next or Beautify or Element uh, UI. Uh, each of us can still add uh, um, a small piece of that. Each of us can still create a, a library that will be used by other people. Uh, we can see uh, 700 stars. That's a lot of people that uh, uh, found this project interesting. Uh, a lot of them uh, use it uh, in, uh, uh, in their projects. Uh, uh, we can see that they are open, opening issues and that's uh, the easiest way to... Mm, okay. Mm. But uh, other than... Uh, other than writing a library, uh, you don't have to uh, just uh, create your a new library if you don't have an idea or uh, you feel that uh, um, you won't be able to uh, focus on it too much. What you can do, instead, you can join an existing team. Uh, luckily, um, in the last, during the last year, uh, a lot changed in the Vue, uh, Vue community. Previously, libraries were uh, mainly uh, created by um, one person or maybe two, two, uh, uh, two people collaborating with each other. Now th those teams grow. Uh, good examples are Next uh, team, uh, which currently has uh, seven people, I think. Uh, Beautify team, which is growing very nicely. Uh, Quasar framework also has a big team right now. Mm, and also in uh, Vue.js core team, uh, we now get uh, specialized teams. Uh, for example, the team working on documentation, there are a few people and uh, uh, recently uh, created a new team that uh, it will be, de uh, uh, will be developing uh, new versions of uh, Viewpress and providing support for it. Mm. So this is another way how you can uh, uh, join the ranks of contributors to uh, Vue.js ecosystem. Mm. The next uh, website, uh, can I ask events? Vue.js org. Okay, find meetups. 
Okay, and the India. We have Bangalore, we have Hyderabad, we have Pune. Pune. How many of you are from Pune? I'm not. Okay, from Hyderabad. I wonder what about other towns like Delhi, like Mumbai? Uh, there are so many times that are very big and there are so many developers. Of course, there are other uh, developer meetups like JS Lovers, which are uh, popular, uh, but uh, mm, we all can take inspiration from the, uh, from the um, organizers uh, and from speakers uh, who uh, share their knowledge on those uh, existing meetups. Uh, India is such a big country that there is always space for additional stages on which uh, we can uh, um, uh, we can uh, allow uh, some of us to grow as uh, promising speakers uh, who the, uh, next year uh, maybe uh, stand with us on this stage or on, or on other stages uh, around the world, like on the Toronto, the London, uh, the Amsterdam. Uh, next uh, website, uh, let's go to Vuvixen. This is a website this is, uh, that is uh, very important for me uh, because I notice among you uh, there are uh, a lot of guys, but there are also women. And uh, next year, uh, when I uh, hopefully come here for the uh, next uh, edition of View Day, because I hope it will be a thing, uh, let's cross fingers for that. Uh, I hope that uh, there will be more women among us and uh, that on this stage, uh, um, sharing their knowledge with us, there will be also more of them. Uh, so uh, Vuvixen is an organization that organizes uh, free workshops around the world uh, for uh, women developers, providing a safe environment for them in which they can... Uh, um, learn uh, Vue.js in, uh, at their own pace and uh, uh, the way they prefer. And uh, uh, mm, why I'm showing this is because uh, so far there were no uh, workshops like that in India. Uh, my friend uh, uh, here from Bangalore was invited, at least, uh, okay. Uh, my friend here from India, um, there's a possibility that uh, uh, she will help uh, with uh, organizing such uh, workshops uh, all, uh, around, uh, around India. So uh, let's uh, cross fingers for her too. And uh, finally, the last website. I told you that uh, this talk was uh, not uh, prepared before. I learned that I will be talking uh, an hour ago or so. So this is just one last topic I was supposed to talk. Okay, uh, can we Vuland? Two, two more, only Vuland and we can move on. Two more projects I'm showing and we end. No, oh, oh, okay, join. Mm. Uh, can I log online to my website, to my account? This is good. To the web clinic, hmm? to the web web clinic. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I just uh, put my password. Okay. Here, so <laughs> I have the code. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I need my 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 account. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next way you can. Uh, Next way you can uh, collaborate with uh, Vue developers from around the world is our official Vue.js chat where I'm administrator and you can also meet Rahul there. And uh, what's good about the chat? Uh, we have uh, 60, 000, uh, over 60,000 users there, uh, a lot of uh, core team members, uh, um, over 50 library authors from around the world, authors of tutorials, uh, event organizers, where we all uh, share our experience, exchange uh, knowledge, uh, help each other to either uh, create uh, new applications with you or uh, organize something for the community. Um, if... Uh, ah, ah, that's here, okay. Yeah, that was the secret one. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So you can see we have some, some rooms for uh, event organizers, for library maintainers, and a lot of rooms uh, on which we exchange, the no exchange knowledge. Uh, most of it is in English, but very low at the least. We also have Hindi channel, which is, which is also in English. Yeah. So uh, mm, I would be very happy if you join our ranks and uh, we have a very fancy logo which you don't see here but I have a lot of stickers left so if you want I, I will uh, give them to you later and uh, what do we want see, because it's not my account, other than official chat of Vue.js, there are also uh, servers on Discord for many, uh, uh, many more supported libraries, uh, for uh, a separate server for Next, for uh, Vuepress, uh, for uh, Vuetify, uh, Vue Material, uh, Quasar Framework, uh, all kinds of other libraries. Uh, together, it's a, can we open a Vue family? Vue family channel, at, oh yeah, at the very top. Yeah, here's a list of all, okay, so Viewfront, view Storefront, uh, Saber, which is also uh, uh, getting traction in, uh, in Vue community, Bootstrap View, all kinds of other uh, chats related to Vue.js where you can uh, discuss with authors of the libraries uh, in the more, uh, Okay, we'll finish. Uh, so let's go to, uh, to the, our uh, last project. Uh, can we open Vue Community, Vue Community Org? This is the last project, which uh, uh, got published uh, finally just a few days ago. It was uh, started uh, a year ago and uh, practically Okay, it was, uh, we started working on it a year ago, but you can see that uh, when you work on something together, it's, it's going much faster. When we try to work on it just as one person or two people, it's not going as, as good. So, uh, View Community Guide is uh, uh, um, additional documentation uh, that is, uh, uh, that is meant uh, to provide information uh, written by the community and specifically for the community and about the community and ecosystem. So all kinds of information and uh, questions that you wouldn't find the answers in official documentation, uh, you will hopefully be able to find here. For example, how to tell my boss that I don't really like React and I would like to work with Vue.js. These kinds of questions, official documentation won't help, won't help you with. But uh, uh, we on official VGS chat uh, heard such questions all the time. So uh, we're trying to uh, prepare a resource. Uh, yeah, the strongest point of view is uh, still a stop. So we, uh, we need to make it longer. Uh, we're trying to provide all answers to such questions that are most commonly um, asked by the community. And uh, why I'm showing you this is because if you want to take your first step into contributing to Vue.js community, this is the easiest way because uh, um, creating a PR and adding something from your knowledge. And we have uh, so many um, experienced developers here uh, who have different points of view on how to create applications, what uh, libraries to use, how to best uh, uh, write uh, a particular feature. Uh, you can share this knowledge on this guide, uh, which is uh, uh, meant to be managed, maintained by the community. And by community, I mean, us here and you on the stage. Uh, that's all from me. I'm. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, I'm giving back. My yeah.